Welcome back, foul mouth fishing hookaholics. We're out on the water in this very chilly, dreary morning. But I figured I'd give a couple of casts. I only got a, maybe about a, an hour, 45 minutes to an hour to fish. Um, <clears throat> right now, the uh, the winds are pretty pretty bad, as you can see. <laughs> Chop on the water. But uh, I just figured I'd come out here cast a few around and see what I could get if anything water's still chilly haven't reached that uh, you know that pivotal 60 degree mark we're roughly hovering around 50 here and there but um, I thought it might be actually a pretty good time to talk about something that was brought up on B fishing's live stream uh, a few weeks ago so Brett and uh, Brett and Chris were talking about rain now we've had rain in the last couple of days they, and Chris was under the assumption that um, rain can warm the water. And Brett brought up the scientific fact that uh, water, which rain, which starts out as ice crystals in the atmosphere, upper atmosphere, uh, warms up, melts and turns into rain. It comes down as a liquid. So it starts out as a solid, comes down as a liquid. Now that means the ambient temperature of the air is the maximum temperature that that water droplet can reach which is true so say you have a uh, say you have like a 55 degree day and it's raining that means that water droplet coming out of the atmosphere by the time it hits the uh, the surface of the lake in this case you're looking at 55 degree water it's if the water itself is 56 degrees it's not going to warm the water if it's 40 degrees, technically, you would assume it wouldn't warm the water. But what I wanted to say is they're both kind of right. You see, there's there's two ways water warms. Well, actually, there's, there's three ways that water warms um, from the sun. So you have convection, which is what I'm occurring right now with the wind, radiation, um, and then, which is basically the sun coming from the sky. So during the summer, when uh, the when the sun is highest, the the sunlight rays are coming as as vertically down onto the surface of the water as possible. So that angle is going to warm the water even more quickly and rapidly and deeper. As the winter progresses, that angle changes and it comes off and it refracts a lot of that heat energy off. So it cool or it doesn't warm as quickly. However. You also have contact, which is, you know, rocks. I have a bunch of riprap rocks here, riprap rock on the uh, on the bank here. So as the sun heats up these rocks, they then convey that heat off into the water. So that's two, and three. What we're experiencing right now is convection, which is actually a process of the wind. And this is where this comes into uh, into theory with Brett and Chris's idea about rain. So convection is the the reaction of the air, the wind, and the turbulence above the surface of the water to actually create a cyclone beneath the water surface. So as the wind is passing over this lake, it's actually drawing the heat up and pushing it. And that's one of the reasons why fishermen fish shoals where the wind blows in. Like this is a blown in point here, a little blown in cove. So the bait fish would be stacked up inside these little coves as the wind pushes them in to what in essence becomes slight, slightly warmer water. And that's the same idea I have, or the same theory I have when it comes to rain. So we all know that hot air, and this is, you know, we're talking hydrodynamics and, and uh, thermodynamics, but hot air rises, cold air sinks. So if you have rain coming out of the sky and hitting the water, it's actually gonna have an effect, in, in my theory, that as the rain droplets are hitting the surface, they're creating a cooler surface area, which is then going to descend and thus force the thermocline and the warmer water to come up. So the thermocline should actually change. This is obviously over a time period. It wouldn't be one day's rain or one hour's rain. This would be over, say, an entire, you know, 12 hour span of nonstop rain. It would then push that warmer water, that subsurface water, which is more stable, up to the top of the water column because you're now dropping colder surface water down as you're adding 
volume in rain and colder rain droplets onto the surface of the lake. So I don't know, I was just thinking about that a couple of days ago and I was like, yeah, you know what? Chris has a point. Rain can theoretically give you the, the, the idea that it's warming the water. It's not truly physically warming the lake or warming the water, but it can give you that appearance because it's literally changing the depth at which the warm water is uh, is in, in, in the entire volume of your lake. And say over a, you know, 20 foot. Say at a 20 foot deep lake, you have water in the, uh, say 40 degrees at 20 to 18, 50, uh, 45, 50 degrees from 18 to say 15. And then, you know, say it's 60 degrees from 15 to the surface. Well, that cold water hitting might bring that cooler water up and it might raise the, the you know, it might lift that 60 degree water up to the surface. So I, I don't know. It's just, uh, it's something that I was just pondering and I thought I'd just uh, drop that in here while I'm sitting here running a little, little original chatter bait. And uh, obviously, like I say, it's very overcast, very cold. Water temperatures haven't really reached up yet, and I don't really think that this is an advantageous day to be out fishing. But I wanted to get out, and I had, you know, 45 minutes to an hour to, to kind of uh, get out here and toss around a little bit. I might, uh, I might just start walking up the hill and go to my backward coves and maybe pull out one of Brett's worms and just a little finesse worm back in one of the uh, little inlets and the little streams back here. But, uh, but I just thought I'd, I'd touch on that little theory that I had. And uh, if you don't know, go over and check out Bee Fishing. I'll leave the link to his, uh, to his channel in the description of this little video. Um, if you like this, if you want more commentary and theories and crazy stuff, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share my channel. And uh, as always, uh, I appreciate you guys have spending a little time with me. Um, I'm gonna start adding a lot more on the water content as the summer hits and as I have more days off um, and the weather's a little bit better and the fish bite is, is far better, I'll definitely be out here, uh, you know, fishing this lake and some other places uh, throughout my area that I like to go to and catch some bass and pike and there's muskie in this lake, but I'm not obviously out there in this in the deep water. But you got muskie, you got pike, you got pickerel, bluegill, sunfish, crappie, um, Pumpkin seeds, smallmouth and largemouth bass, all in this area. But uh, for today, my hands are freezing cold. <laughs> it is windy as hell. And uh, I think that I'm going to call that for this part of the video. So I might uh, do another, uh, another video back in the other shallows over there. It might be a little bit warmer water. So uh, we'll see what we do. Maybe that's what I'll do. All right, as always, thanks again for spending time. Uh, keep it real, tight lines, and I'll catch you on the next cast. Later.